It's a year now since Hillary Clinton lost the U.S. presidential election to Donald Trump, and the Democratic Party has gone on losing in state elections around the country. My guest here in Washington is Neera Tandon, a longtime advisor to Hillary Clinton. Why are the Democrats finding it so hard to put the past behind them and find a new direction? Neera Tandon, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thanks for having me. This summer, Donald Trump managed to get his ratings down to the lowest for any president at this point in his tenure since records began. How is it that the Democrats have failed to get any political advantage from this? Well, I would say that they were able to so far uh, successfully defeat the Trump's various versions of the health care bill. Uh, they have they don't control Congress or the executive branch, so uh, really their their ability is to influence even just a handful of Republicans, which was which was how they were successful in the health care bill. But the, but the same poll that had Trump at such low ratings also put the Democratic Party as uh, standing for nothing except being against Trump. Forty forty eight percent have a negative view of the party. In fact, you're flatlining in the polls. You have done for the last twelve months. Yes, the parties, both parties, are unpopular. The question really is uh, how. But people make a choice in the elections, and we'll see in November. There are two governors races, and in in the United States, how those candidates fare in the special elections. Democrats haven't won those special elections, but Democrats have been outperforming how they've been do how they did last November. So we haven't had a lot of tests of that. I would say that Donald Trump has a strong opposition in the country. Uh, we are now at close to 50 percent strongly disapprove in a variety of polls. And whether people that makes people actually vote for Democrats is a is a big open question. I believe the Democratic Party has to fight Donald Trump, but also has to provide an alternative to him as well. But he's had a horrible six months. He's under his campaign has been under six separate investigations. The White House is totally dysfunctional. He's made a lot of promises. He couldn't keep it. You should have picked up a lot more. If you can't kick a, a politician when he's down in this city, where can you? Uh, you know, I would say the races that have existed so far, there have been five special elections. You lost, the, you lost all of them. There are five special elections. Republican performance in those districts is by 20%, up 20% over Democrats. In each of those special elections, uh, You're talking about Kansas, Montana, Georgia, Kansas, South Carolina. Kansas, Montana, Georgia, South Carolina, exactly. Uh, there's Democrats came close within three, four, five points, and they made up a gap. So, in a, we haven't, we've yet to have an example, and we will now. We have Virginia in November. In Virginia, you have a race that's a purple state. It's a pretty close state. We'll see how Democrats perform. I think the question, uh, the, the the big question in politics today is that there is a big resistance to Trump. Uh, that there's a big resistance to you as well, to the Democratic Party. Well, I'm, well. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm within an or the organization, but I would say I'm not, I'm not the leader of the Democratic Party, but I would say that I think you'll see, we see signs that Democrats are planning to vote at higher numbers than Republicans they have in the special elections, and I think. Uh, you'll see it's not reflected in the fundraising, is it? I and mean, the party's broke. No, that's not true. The party's broke. That's not true. Three point five million dollars in the red. Isn't the, it? It's the it's the candidates. The big question is whether candidates are raising money, and the candidates, Democratic candidates, are out raising Democratic candidates for House are out raising House Republican candidates, even though they're in the majority. But so, in the first six months of the year, the Republicans raised almost double the amount that the Democrats got. It did in the DNC, but yes. not as candidates. And this is small donations from people donating under two hundred dollars. So it's grassroots support. This is what there, you wanted to pick up. Is, they're picking up grassroots support. No, you're, there's higher grassroots support amongst Democratic candidates, House, Senate governor's races than on the Republican side. I think you're looking at the Democratic National Committee. Yes, I am. Yeah. And versus the, our, the yeah. Republican National Committee. Yeah. The Republican National Committee does control the various uh, parts of the government, so that it's easier to fundraise that way. But I think if you actually look candidates to candidates, Democrats are actually outraising Republicans. The House Democrats just outraised 
the Republican, uh, the House Republicans, month after month after month. There seems to be no agreement on how to deal with Trump, apart from resistance. The party seems unaccountably clueless about how to Why? take Why the fight. Why do you say that? How to take the fight to Trump. But why do you say that? Well, uh, you, because I'm looking at some of the things that some of the congressmen are saying. Uh, Jim Himes, for instance, of Connecticut, he said, the Democrats must do more to compete with expansive and unrealistic promises made by the president. Debbie Dingell from Michigan, we need to show working men and women we understand their anxieties and fears. Isn't it, isn't it shocking to you that people are actually having to say that? This is like the first day at school, yes. isn't it? You know, would, we I, have to understand I, I that, anxieties I, and fears. I guess, I mean, this is so basic to politics, I, isn't it? I do think Democrats have an opportunity, and progressive candidates have an opportunity, which is that on every issue the president has put forward, he has created, almost every single issue, he's created a broad opposition in the country. Paris, the Paris deal was a... 50-50 issue, 55-45 issue a year ago. Now it's two to one in support of Paris. If you look at the Affordable Care Act, Affordable Care Act, before he started talking about it, uh, was at 38% approval. Now it's at close to 60% approval. But there are people in the Democratic Party, and Tim Ryan of Ohio is one of them. Have you, have you met a party so far where everybody agrees on everything? No, but, but I haven't met a party before where people are saying our own brand is toxic, which is what Tim Ryan is saying. There's just no doubt about it. We're not connecting with people the way we need to connect with them. Our brand is worse than Trump. Yes, I think he did say that last January. And I think the question right now for the country is, is people agree with the opposition to Trump and Democrats have to offer an agenda for upward mobility, how people who have been struggling, not for eight years or 15 years, but for decades, how their lives are going to improve. We've put forward ideas. I know Senate leaders have put forward ideas about how to create more high paying jobs. It's been a jobs. year since the election was lost. Why is it taking so long? Because the thing that Congress does is deliberate on health care, on tax policy. And what about the party? Is the party spending all this time tearing itself apart? No, the party is spending Rather time coming up with ideas and directions. The Democratic Party in the United States is a party of its candidates. Candidates, we have more people running for office as Democrats in the House and in in the House than we have ever had. And still you have the director of the Elections Research Center at Wisconsin-Madison University, Barry Bird, and he says it's a bit surprising that Democrats haven't managed a single victory yet and haven't had more success in turning their anger against the Trump administration into something tangible. I wonder, I don't, I, I have to say I find that interesting because Again, well, it's if you true, look at isn't it? It's not just interesting. No, it? it's, it's not true. true. I mean, if you look at a straight, the five races we've had, Republican numbers in those races, right? So people who vote as Republicans is on average 20% higher. If the people had an expectation that even with Donald Trump, you can make up 20 points in South Carolina, that seems to be unrealistic to it me. It doesn't mean it's going to transfer nationally. No, it means that you have to look at a race like Virginia, which is a close race, and see how that, now that, and Ralph if you Northam. Don't, and if you don't win that? Yes, that would be a bad sign. But Ralph Northam is just had a pullout in which he's 13 points ahead of his opponent. Now, will it be 13 points on election day? Will it be 10? Will it be 12? Will it be 8? I don't know. But Trust I is a problem, isn't it? Trust in the Democratic Party. It's not. It's a, there's a trust of all institutions. And Democrat representative in Congress, Pramila Jayapal, says, I don't, still don't think voters trust Democrats. I think they don't necessarily know what Democrats stand for and mm -hmm. how they differentiate from Republicans. Again, this is basic politics 101, isn't it? I mean, I've lived in politics for a long time and for? I've never been. I, I can tell you what I think What I think the Democratic Party stands for. I think the Democratic Party stands for, or progressive politics writ large stands for, people who need like a champion, people, the underdog, the people who do, who, who need help, not the people who are well-connected and uh, doing really well in this economy. That's so what, so what's the pitch? I mean, Donald Trump has had his pitch, make America what is, great again. <laughs> um, what's, what's the pitch for the Democratic the, Party? The pitch Three or four be, words. The Three pitch or four should words. be is we're the party that's about upward mobility. 
for people who haven't had it. Stock market is doing fantastic, so upward mobility is, is working. Why people, is upward mobility? Upward mobility has nothing to do with the stock market. How, where do you see well, that? Pe well, people's portfolios are, are going up, aren't the, they? The challenge of the system is that a, like 50% of Americans don't really have a portfolio, so the stock market has nothing to do with them. That, I think, is the challenge in our economy, which is if you haven't gone to college, if you live in a rural community, if you live in an exurb, you're standing still or falling behind. I think Donald Trump expertly uh, tapped into that anger. The opportunity is that he has done nothing to help those people. In fact, he's made it worse. His health care bill hurts working class but people. But his base is solid. His base remains he's, solid. No, he's not a solid. He was at a 30% strong support the week before Election Day. He was at 45%. The week before Christmas, he was at 45%, 45% in the country. Now he's at 35%, 60%, the worst numbers any, for anyone. But I completely take the point. That you, there are people who have questions about Donald Trump, and they, they have, the question for them is, are they going to come out and vote against him or his party in the upcoming elections? I see plenty of evidence when you have Democrats Democrats outperforming Republicans by 14 points in races where Republicans have a 20 point advantage. Uh, that seems to me, that's a story of lots of Democratic enthusiasm, not so much Republican enthusiasm. But we'll see in these coming races whether that's true. So why don't people in the polls think that the Democrats are doing a better job? I, I think mean, they see According that, to CBS poll, early I in the summer, only 30% of voters approve of the job Democrats are doing in Congress. Could you look at the Republican numbers over the last eight years? But you're people not proud of these numbers, no, are I, you? I think they'd be be they should be better. But at the end of the day, if you're a party that's opposing action like health care people see you as opposing mitch mcconnell's numbers have been terrible for years but he he had a strategy which was to stop the ter what he thought were bad things obama was doing and make obama not effective and he was rewarded in the polls even though republicans in congress have had terrible numbers for the last eight years i do not think democrats in congress are the question you should be asking i think the question you should be asking is how are Democrats, how, when people ask, are they going to vote for Democrats or Republicans in the House races, what are they saying? And they're saying by eight points, they're going to vote for Democrats. It's the largest margin it's been in years. And since, in fact, the last time Democrats took the House back, which was 2006. Your ideas conference in May this year, Bernie Sanders wasn't invited. We didn't have anyone who's run Why for not? office. Because he's he's we, the most popular politician in the United States, according to the Actually, polls. he's not the most. I, I'm a, I think Bernie Sanders has done amazing work. But uh, there, are lots of Demo, there are lots of candidates who are more popular than him, or at, not candidates, office holders, or former office holders, Barack Obama, Joe Biden. We didn't have any of them because they had run for office before. You're still angry with Sanders? For his attacks on Hillary Clinton during the campaign? I'm not angry. I, I have... I have applauded Senator Sanders work over the last year as a vehement champion of the Affordable Care Act. He has done rallies around the country. Those have been those have been exceptionally helpful. I think he's done critical, critical work to this save the Affordable This is since the Care campaign, Act. since the election. But what about during? You said he drove a lot of Hillary Clinton's negatives. I mean we had a right we had a she primary. drove a lot of her own negatives. We had a she? very hard fought primary. Uh, I think Ted Cruz drove negatives for Donald Trump because he was running against him. Bernie Sanders drove negatives for Hillary because he was running against her. I, I think that's, that is a fact. I'm not saying it's like her numbers were only because of Bernie Sanders or anything like that. Let's look at Israel because he tried to change the platform for the Democratic Party on Israel, didn't he? But he, but he, he was highly critical of what he called Israeli brutality. But the platform ended up with not a mention of the occupation that hit 50 years this year and no mention of the know, settlements, did it? I that's not fair. I think the platform actually did in the end have language about the historic treatment of Palestinians and some reference to the settlements, if I recall. There was some language in the final draft. I'm afraid draft. I didn't see it. But there one was. of the people who helped draft the position on Israel and the Democratic Party was Cornell West, Professor Cornell West, and he said, we're at a turning point now. For too long, the Democratic Party has been beholden to the pro-Israel lobby APAC. Is that true? Beholden to APAC and didn't take say, seriously I the think, humanitarian of the, I, humanity I think, of the Palestinians? I mean, I think Cornell West uh, 
I sat side by side with Cornell West and he had lots of criticisms of the Democratic Party. I still think, I think at the end of the day, he is not a Democrat. Is the party afraid of the pro-Israel lobby? I do not think the party, I, Barack Obama had just championed the Iran nuclear deal, the Center for American Progress and Democrats voted for it. So uh, I think that's the position of the Democratic Party. How long is the blame game for the election loss going to go on inside, I, I, I mean, inside I wish the Democratic would, Party? I would hope it would end soon. It's been a year. Isn't it time the party got over it? I, think mo I actually think the vast majority of the people in the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders supporters, Hillary Clinton supporters, are actually over it. If you look at the primaries that have happened over the last several, year, several months, Democratic Party primaries. Lots of people voted for Bernie Sanders or voting for moderate candidates. John Ossoff won amongst millennials. They came out in large, large uh, But he was one of the, in Georgia, he lost. He lost, but he was a moderate candidate who uh, a lot of Sanders supporters voted for. The, I think Donald Trump has definitely been more unifying amongst Democrats. And you see Bernie Sanders supporters, Hillary Clinton supporters, all voting for Democrats. And a lot of moderates winning and a lot of progressives winning. There's a big races. push in the party to change the leadership at national level, isn't there? Is there? Because Congresswoman Kathleen Rice, she said the entire Democratic leadership team should go. Linda Sanchez just reported in the paper now. Senior House Democrat explicit in wanting the House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi to step step down. Yes, I would time say time to pass at, the torch. At she the says. same time, I mean, this is up to the members of Congress, the Democratic House members and the Democratic Senate members, to decide who their leaders are. But Nancy Pelosi did withstand a challenge, and she won She's a large majority. Is she it time is. to go. I mean, I that's up to the House Democrats. I think Nancy Pelosi has done a great job unifying the caucus. She's a much better negotiator than Paul Ryan. She will end up at the end of this uh, year probably with perhaps more Democratic accomplishments in a negotiation By than staying, the Republicans By staying, isn't there were. a divide that is, is difficult to heal? I mean, they've been talking about this in California. If we don't heal the divide in the party between the, the people who, who are being blocked from rising up the hierarchy um, because of these people like Nancy Pelosi I mean, and people I guess in their I would 70s, say, they I, are blocking the rise of a new generation, aren't they? There are so many great leaders in the House Democratic Caucus right now. If you look at what's happening online, on social media, on TV, and blogs, Seth Moulton, Jason Kander didn't win, but uh, Joe Kennedy Jr., Kathleen Clark, these are phenomenal leaders in the party who have a very strong voice. You know, again, I have to say, I think people who are fixated on uh, having internal battles, as you just mentioned a minute ago, isn't it time to move past the internal battles? To me, I think the answer is, let's focus on what we can accomplish with, uh, what, we can, what we can defend against with Donald Trump. In, into these internal battles comes Hillary Clinton's book. I think if you read the whole book, uh, she takes on plenty of blame herself. I understand that, but how helpful is all this to the party? I know the book is going to make her a lot of money, but does it help the party move on? You know, I actually think that, I, I think there's a lot of trepidation about the book ahead of time because it was sowing division, etc. But I actually think for a lot of Hillary supporters, the message of the book the overall message of the book is this was this was a defeat for Hillary, but there is a movement that was created, and that that movement needs to engage in politics now. That we cannot like go to bed or go away. But if you care about if you cared about voting for Hillary, you have to care about resisting Trump. And I think actually the book has done has been incredibly helpful in that way. Even her attack on the party in June before the book came out, saying I inherited nothing from the Democratic Party. I mean, it was bankrupt. Its data was mediocre to poor, non-existent, wrong. I had to inject money into it. She's still bitter. She's still pointing the finger at others. I thought that was one quote out of like a million different things she has said. Well, she's, she said, well, you always have to pick a quote, but I mean, is there any way in which that quote looks nicer than it is? It just stirs up bad blood in the party, doesn't it? I think Hillary is trying to be, I think Barack Obama, I think Hillary Clinton are all trying to be as helpful to the Democratic Party. I'm sure she's going to raise money for the party. She's going to campaign for candidates. That's the test of these things. Senator Al Franken had to tell her, 
enough's enough, basically. It's time to, time to move on. We have to move on by proving we're the party that cares about a lot of the people who voted for Donald Trump. Yes, I agree. Good. I agree with that. And I think she does too, actually. If you read the book, I think she does say that her economic message didn't get through enough. And I think that's an important, uh, important argument. I think the Democratic Party right now is in a battle for the hearts and minds of people. And the competition is, you know, an ugly, xenophobic, racialized politics, whether it's Charlottesville or the Muslim ban or Trump's statements on Puerto Rico. He's trying to appeal to people by attacking, you know, basically mining their hatred of other people. And that's what the Democratic Party is up against today. And we have to have a, we have to do a better job. I think Trump, a lot of people voted for Trump thinking he would be a champion for the working class. His policies have betrayed that. And it's up to Democrats to not only criticize Trump and the fact that his health care bill hurts the people who voted for him, but and his tax plan hurts the people who voted for him and helps the super wealthy, but you have to have an affirmative agenda. Hillary Clinton said on a recording, just, just posted on your website, I, I believe in reason and facts. Mm -hmm. But she also has yet to admit, not that her use of a private email server was wrong, she did eventually manage to say sorry, but the fact that she failed to tell the whole truth about it to the American public. How did she not tell the whole truth about it? Okay, well, the you take the fact-checking website, uh -huh. PolitiFact. It reported in August last year. Mrs. Clinton repeatedly said she didn't have any classified information in her email, marked or unmarked. After the FBI investigation, including the interview with Clinton, FBI Director Comey said she unequivocally did. They rated her statement, as they put it cover, so colorfully, pants on fire. Okay, I really... That falsehood you, is still on the record, isn't it? Are you actually referencing one PolitiFact <laughs> statement on Hillary Clinton when there were maybe, I don't know, seven million on Donald Trump? I mean, no, no, if, I, you're, I, asking, if well, you're asking about how the Democratic... I'm asking about a, a Democratic candidate that you were close Hillary to. Hillary Clinton is never going to be on the ballot again. She's never going to be on the ballot again. She's not going to run for president again. She's not going to be, she's not running for Senate. She's not running for governor. I think it's fair for her to try to provide a history of what happened. I think the idea that she was not candid in a time when she released all of her emails or all these emails well, got that's released. That's the other point. She didn't. She said in, repeatedly in 2014 that she turned over all work-related emails to the State Department. The FBI said she hadn't done that. The FBI there covered were, several can thousand work-related emails. The FBI had two investigations going on during the presidential election. They had one of Donald Trump and they had one of Hillary Clinton. And the FBI director only publicly commented on one of them. He there was a republic there was a FBI investigation of Donald Trump and his connections to the Russians and his campaign's connections but that's not to the my Russians. Point. My point is that she wasn't wholly honest about these emails. I think it's real. It's never with, been set with, straight, with has it? All due respect. Has it? The idea that you're spending time focused on Hillary Clinton's veracity when we have a president who lies all the time strikes me as not useful. She's not running for anything. She lost the race. These facts have been established. How can you ever claim <laughs> the moral high ground if you don't tell the truth oh about God, everything? Oh my God, any, I mean, I'd say like, I, to be candid with you, I think, I think people like, there are people who've done misdemeanor crimes who have more honesty than Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton we're, we're, we're was talking exonerated. About, we're talking about the Hillary principle Clinton of truth. Don't you care about the principle Hillary of truth? Hillary Clinton was exonerated by the FBI. By Donald April Trump last still year. has, has, a current investigation of his not handling of classified information. So she's more pollution. honest than Donald Trump. Okay, but that's not but the point I'm you, making. Can I, why are you asking about Hillary Clinton at all? Because by April last year, she'd given enough speeches to be fact-checked, along with her opponents. In truth-telling, she was always, as you said, way ahead of Trump, even slightly ahead of Bernie Sanders. But according to PolitiFact, only 50% of the statements they checked were found to be true or mostly true. Only uh, that 50 is, That is not accurate. 50% of Hillary said. Clinton's, all of her comments? Of, of the ones that they fact-checked. 
were of all the true. I they just, checked. I think Only that is 50 false. Only 50 percent were found to be true or mostly that, true. I believe is false. She had many fact checks. Maybe you're checking a weird website, but they, this is politifact. The, there are the multiple one fact checks uh, on email or every topic. Because I checked her, <laughs> checked a lot of her political fact. She often was. She got full veracity. So, so she was rated as an honest politician, but for only half the time, by politifact. You just said more than Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Okay. Case closed. I, I did. I did. So isn't it time, given all this, to stop is the, there a the, the crocodile clear tears about this? I mean, you've been very loyal to her for many, many years. Haven't you had enough I have, I have, of, of going over the election why, again? Why? I mean, I have to say, I don't actually understand why we're even talking about this. Well, she's just a, produced a book that's created some more bad blood in the Democratic it hasn't Party. I don't know. Has it created some bad blood? She had some criticisms of Sanders. He had some criticisms in the back. The book is doing really well. <laughs> Millions of people seem to be interested. She has crowds for it. Who knows? I mean, I don't know whether it's actually helped the party or hurt the party. I think you're making a value statement when you say it's hurt the party. All right. It's good to have you on the program. You're it was, a it was, Thanks it was very fun much. To, it was fun to engage with you.